Welcome to Art Review. This is Art Senpai, and today I'm trying out a longer video format where I'll be showing you Kohai's the full process of how I draw. It's 100% raw and unedited, so let me know what your Kohai's think. Alright, so here's the drawing by Doll.Dorable from our Discord channel, and we'll start by examining the geometry, shapes, and perspective of this drawing. I noticed the perspective seems slightly off, but it's it could be easily rectified. So firstly, let's sketch the perspective line. And then we'll apply the box method that I've taught you Kohai's before. So first we'll start by identifying the perspective and then we'll follow up by sketching the box. So this is what the box will look like in such a perspective. Once the box is drawn, we can move on to the center line, which is around here. On the center line is where the character is sitting, and this indicates where the character is located. And to help you Kawhi's to visualize this 3D space better, I will draw the exact axis, which is this one. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So now we have our 3D box sketch out with the right perspective. Drawing the character with the same accuracy can be easily done. So see how everything lines up just right once the box is in place. It makes visualizing the rest so much simpler. So okay, let's try to reduce the opacity of the box so we can see the original illustration clearly. We'll do this in stages, starting with the geometric structure for the hips. This shape here is what we see, um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to draw something that looks like a cylinder, but not quite, because it's flat on one side. I'm not sure the exact term of this shape, but it's basically referring to the hip region. Yeah, it has the shape of a pillow. So make sure to draw it as flat, with the center line running across the hip. To further explain, I'll draw this shape more clearly. This defines the hip, which will guide us in drawing the rest of the body. Once you have drawn the hip, you can use it as a reference point for the rest of the body. Super helpful. Now we have drawn the hip, let's move on to drawing the body. So as you can see, the body is leaning forward, and it's obvious that the body is a bit too wide. And if it's too wide, you can disrupt the balance of the figure. And one helpful tip is the chest width should always be narrower than the hips. This is the guideline you have to follow. This might not apply to all body types or perspectives, but it's a good rule of thumb to start with. Now, okay. Now we can start drawing the body. So given our overhead viewpoint, we can clearly see the top surface of the body. As mentioned, the lower body seems too wide. So we'll narrow it down before drawing the remaining parts.
Let's add the center lines to our sketch for precision and to ensure everything's aligned. As seen in my illustration, you can see the contours of the body beginning to take shape, which will then connect these center lines to, the form, to form the abdominal region. We come across this structure which is known as the diaphragm. Now to continue our drawing, we will connect these specific points here and here. These forms the abdominal muscles, commonly referred to as the abs. Next, let's link the waist to the hip area in our sketch. Right here, there's this muscle, though I can't recall its name. It's this one right here. And then we'll connect the waist. With the basic body structure established and clearly described, we can now move on to the legs. We will use cylinders to draw the legs, like this. It's a neat trick that helps to understand the leg structure and the way the legs move. To help you get the idea, I would draw the cross section of the cylinder. Now, when it comes to the knee, a cool way to tackle it is by imagining the kneecap as a sphere. It will help make your drawing more lifelike. I have to say, the original drawing nailed the leg positioning and proportions. The proportions are excellent, so I'll just replicate them here. Hang tight for a second um, as I'm sketching it out. So looking closely, I realized the second leg could add a little bit more length to, to bring out a more relaxed pose. So let me just fine tune this a little bit. Oops, that might have been a stretch too far. Wait, let me just readjust the length of the leg again. Okay, you're probably wondering how I spotted that tweak in the first place. Well, that's a very good question. The answer is simple, perspective. Check out these lines. Here, here, and here. There are your, these are your perspective lines. Your knee needs to line up with them. Well, by knowing that, it turns out the leg could be an inch could be an inch longer to keep our perspective in check. So let me just fix that. Now we've got the perspective spot on. Can you see how it all comes together? Great. Now that we have nailed the legs, it's time to dive into the next part of our figure drawing. Zahando. So if you notice the, from the original drawing, the hands, the arms, I should say, are somewhat way too long. 
If the characters were to fully extend their arms to touch the floor, they would end up around here. So it should be shorter, like maybe here, I guess. Now, let's draw the spheres for the shoulders, followed by cylinders for the arms, which should stop around here. Oops. Looks like we've got a little misalignment happening here. No worries though. Let's just erase and redraw. Okay, so let's focus on the arm now and the elbow. Hold on. I notice we have a common pitfall right here, and we need to ensure our lines are parallel to the perspective lines, like so. That means when drawing the hand and forearm, we need to keep our perspective lines in mind. So the forearm needs to be positioned right here, and let's mirror the process for the other arm. The process is the same. Okay, the arm should add around. Um, so this is how the perspective should look like. It seems about right. So let's close our perspective grid here and see how it compares. Hmm, the arm seems to be tilting downwards a little. It's like it's been pushed down, while the form appears more parallel to the ground. Now this should be a more accurate way to draw the character in this particular perspective. All right, let's dive into the head now. Remember that this is the center line of the head, which means our neck will naturally emerge from here. Now here's a little trick. I wouldn't really advise you to draw the face flat on like this. I suggest you to tilt it slightly towards the viewer. Why, you ask? Well, in any illustration, one of the key points of interest is the face. So let's make sure it's clearly presented to the viewer, right, front, and center. And how do you decide how much to tilt the face, you might wonder. So back to our center line again. If you draw a line off from it, say about a 30 degree angle. Yeah, that should do it. Any more than that, and your character will look like Stephen Hawking. So 30 degrees is about as far as you would naturally tilt your head. Now that we've got the angle, we can start sketching the neck here and here. Time to sketch the head now. If you remember from my previous videos, there's this neat box method for drawing faces. Why the box method, you might ask? Well, since our character is looking down, it's clear we'll be seeing the top of their head. So we start with the top of the head using the box method and draw the facial lines. So here goes, this is the face. Here, here. Here, here. Okay, and that's the center line, something like this.
there we have it. It becomes pretty clear that once you get the hang of drawing basic shapes like cubes and spheres, you can pretty much draw anything. Wait a sec. The neck's looking a little bit too long here. Let's use um, tech magic and make a quick adju adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking better. So that's my take on drawing a character in this particular pose. All right, let's switch gears and tackle the cat. I'm a bit puzzled as to why the cat is facing in the opposite direction. I mean, that the whole point of the drawing is the cat, isn't it? The cat is the star of the show, I assume. So therefore, it's important that you draw the cat's feature. So here's a suggestion. Why not draw the cat facing the camera? This way, the drawing becomes more interactive, don't you think? So you can imagine the cat having an interaction with the character, like um, rubbing its cheek against him. So to do this, I'm going to decrease the opacity of the drawing first. So we're going to imagine a cute interaction between the cat and the person, and where the cat is showing affection to the character by rubbing its cheek against her face. Now using a box structure, a basic one, I'll illustrate how to draw the cat's head. And following that, the body, which might seem odd now, okay, but it will make sense as we progress. I'll sketch in, okay, let's see. Okay, I'll sketch in the tail too. Now we have a clear structure, um, we have a clear view of the cat's body structure, right? Okay, now using the geometrical structure as the base, we can now draw the actual shape of the cat. Next, let's focus on the cat's face structure, and we're using a sphere as a guide. And don't forget the center line. And the cat ears, if you want to complete the basic head structure. Now the eyes. Well, if you don't know already, I have totally zero idea on how to draw a cat. Okay, I know the cat looks cursed rather than cute, but please bear with me. Okay, so now we're doing the body. It has a curvy and fluid shape. Next, we sketch the paws. It's helpful to familiarize with the basic geometry of a cat structure for this. And the arms can be simplified into one main line. Followed by the paw. It's quite simple once you break it down. You can find references online too, um, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm actually displaying cat pictures on my browser. Trust me. It's only cat pictures. And voila, you have a cat's paw. Now let me clarify, I'm not an expert at drawing cats, okay? This is actually my very first time drawing cats. Cat girls? Yeah, I've drawn them many times. Too many times, in fact. It's becoming an obsession. I don't draw animals, I draw boobas. Which is why, always remember to find reference from real life when drawing something you don't know. Okay, anyway, let's continue with the same process 
for the rest of the body. Okay, I'm drawing the tummy, the cat stomach. Here's our cat so far. It might not be 100% accurate, anatomically speaking, but hopefully it gives you a basic idea of how to approach it. I mean, we got the basic body shape and legs down. So lastly, I guess we can focus on the tail. Everything's good, I guess. All right, let's talk about the original sketch for a bit. It's great, honestly, but if I may, I would like to suggest a few tweaks to enhance it further, just nitpicking a little here and there. Now I notice a slight issue with the perspective that we could improve. Okay, so take a look at this part right here. It seems a little bit off just slightly misplaced. So if we sketch out the vanishing lines, you know, the edge of the box, it should ideally be extended far in this direction. Okay, and then let's consider a vanishing point way out there. And from there, uh, this piece should align closer to it. Of course, I'm just eyeballing this, not exactly a precise calculation, but it's useful. Now, it might be way off the canvas, um, far outside, but that's okay. It's just an observation here. According to, this um, according to this perspective, the handle the handle here, the real guard, should be drawn slightly different. Perhaps like this, if we were to follow the perspective line. And right now, let's look at the steps, the staircase. Okay, it should be drawn around this level. Notice the bar here. It should actually be placed here instead because that's where the stairs are located. Uh, let's clear this up a little bit. Okay, now consider a perspective line like this. Here are the stairs. So when we consider where the stairs begin, the bar should start from that point which would be around about here. I mean, that's, it looks logical, doesn't it? So the bar should start from here, descending down this way. Okay, perhaps it should be a little bit taller. After all, it's a hand support, often used by older individuals. So it should be something like this, you know, just taller considering the perspective. Now we're not going to get too detailed here, but this piece should ideally be placed here. Okay, it might be a good idea to act at this rectangular shape right here, but it's best to leave it out first. I'll tell you why later. So for now, let's focus on the handle, which should be drawn here in line with the perspective. Now, one more thing, and please don't think I'm picking on this picture, but there's this part right here. I can see what you're going for and it's close. 
but for visual consistency, um, you might want to consider aligning it with the same perspective. Yep, with the exact axis. So it should ideally look more like this. It's, it's like parallel to the exact axis. Okay, so remember from this viewpoint, we can see the bottom. So it should appear larger than taper down. Maybe this version is a bit too square. So let's round it out a little bit. Then we give it some thickness. Erase the guiding rectangle and there you have it a sign that's perspectively accurate. Here, let me add a quick finishing touch. A front view like this. Don't forget this part. And there you have it, a sign with a consistent perspective. Now, Keep these points in mind as you sketch. It's always beneficial to keep checking your perspective. All right. Let's clear the grid and move on. All right, I've ironed out the tiny issues in our drawing, and now it's time to add some fresh lines. I'll crank up the music and go into the zone so you guys can grab a snack or a cup of coffee. And I'll see you right back here in just a moment. Maybe it'll take a couple of minutes, I guess.
All right, welcome back. Um, I'm glad you're still here. Now, I tried my best to reproduce the hues and the gradients of the original sketch. I gave it my all. I even strived to adjust the background so that everything would align. However, I can't quite match the brush technique of this original original drawing. So my apologies. Okay, I did make some minor alterations to the figure. So instead of the girl gazing downward as before, I made her slightly more, you know, enduring by adjusting her head tilt. So now we have this engaging focal point that is visible from this position, as well as the face. Um, which in my view is more charming and kawaii. Also, I should mention that I removed the shading from here. As you can see from the original artwork, it has this leaf pattern, which is an interesting concept. I mean, I understand what um, the artist is trying to depict with the environment, with a leaf overhead, um, but when the light strikes the subject or the knee, um, it creates this sort of leaf pattern. By, in my opinion, it's better to maintain a cleaner design. So same here, um, here as well, just maintain an overall clean approach. Um, overall, in terms of shading, lighting, and shadows, I think it's well executed in the original drawing. Um, but one more element seems to be the issue. So I'm assuming the light source is from this direction. This is pretty obvious because the light is concentrated on the legs, here and here. So it's certain that it's coming from this direction. But here's something that's a bit puzzling. I don't think the area I'm pointing at would actually be illuminated. Um, so to realistically portray this light, it would be hitting the subject more directly, right here. As it stands, it seems unlikely that light would reach this point. Um, it's not going to get, get there because from what I can visualize, the subject's hand would be blocking most of the lights. So to keep things consistent and logical, I will get rid of the light in this area. We're going to erase it for now. Don't you think that looks more natural? Okay, however, I spotted another issue. This area here is way too dark. Like, there's like zero details on it. So here's an idea. Let's try to put a little bit of light there. But we'll just add a touch, nothing too drastic. Maybe a slight shift in direction. All right, doesn't this make more sense considering the light source? I mean, just my two cents. Um, but I'm thinking of brightening up this spot. Yeah, this spot. Um, because it's a bit too shady. So let's add some details and, you know, just breathe a little life into it. I did my best to replicate the original drawing as closely as possible, um, pay but do pay attention to the correct anatomy and lighting as well. Along the way, um, 
I also want to make sure to correct the perspective, especially the handles, the rear guard. So now we have a good foundation for the drawing. Okay, with that out of the way, let's shift gears a bit and talk about composition. The focus point, particularly. Composition is a fundamental part of drawing because it guides our eyes to focus on specific points. So you want to take note of that. When you apply techniques like the rule of thirds, it can help to keep the focal point centered, just as you would want it to be. But here's where I think the original drawing could use a little boost, the flow of the viewer's gaze. You might want to take that into account. So from the original drawing, it's clear that this area right here is the main point of interest. Okay, but based on my judgment, um, the viewer's gaze takes a bit of a roundabout journey to reach that focus point. Um, just let me explain. So firstly, when we are looking at this drawing, we'll notice the tail first, which guides the eye downwards. From there, the gaze might wander up here before, yeah, it might take a, a, a D route, I guess, before it ends up at the main focus point, which is this. And that's not quite ideal because it takes a bit of time for the gaze to arrive at the main point. So it took a D route, you know. And what's more, the perspective over here could potentially distract the viewer and lead their gaze away from the drawing. Yeah, this guardrail is a big problem. So that's basically the journey of a viewer's gaze. In this case, um, it's not as comfortable or as intuitive as the original original drawing intended it to be. So how can we improve this? Okay, so let me just show you how. So first we can change the tail's direction. By adjusting the tail to guide the gaze upwards instead of downwards, we can create a more direct path to the focus point, which is the cat, obviously. And then we need to find a way to guide the viewer's gaze downward from the tail. See what I'm trying to do? So from the tail, it moves up and then you want it to move down. Yeah, sort of like a circular motion right here. So with these adjustments, everything within this circle sort of like makes a more satisfying viewing experience. Okay, so but consider this problem. There's a clear link between the tail's position and the direction of the viewer's gaze, right? The tail leads the viewer's eyes upwards. But how do we maintain this connection and ensure the focal point remains intact? There are a lot of ways to fix this, but in my opinion, the simplest approach would be by drawing the additional handle right here. Yeah, this handle. So we'll re redirect the gaze back to the focus point that we want. So keep that in mind 
It doesn't have to be perfect or overly complicated. So this additional or extension of the guard reel will redirect the flow of the gaze, which what is what we want to achieve in this drawing. As viewers, um, we couldn't really catch too many details at the same time. Um, that's why it's critical to have a redirection of gaze. Yep, so this additional guard reel will sort of, um, you know, change the direction of your focus, I guess. Yeah, this is the purpose of installing that very guard reel. Okay, so let me just quickly illustrate how we can actually um, achieve this. So you want to do something like this. Yeah, just change the color a bit. Um, Okay, something like this. So let's tackle the background now. I'll be honest, my skills in drawing background are still a work in progress. I mean, the original background, it's, it's much better. But however, but um, there's something, um, there's a minor issue that we need to address. So let's make the necessary changes. If you look carefully, there's a disconnection right here, and we need to do something to bring the gaze back to the focus point. So here's a suggestion. Let's place some leaves in a particular area. In my opinion, it's the perfect spot, this one. Not only will it add an interesting element to the drawing, but it also serves a more practical purpose, which is to guide the viewer's gaze. I'm not an expert in drawing leaves. I'm eyeballing it without any reference. Um, but remember, we're not aiming for perfection here. Something simple yet effective will do. So basically, you just draw this leaf here um, because you want to redirect the viewer's focus back to the focus point. So that is what we're trying to achieve with this large ass leaf. Don't worry about the detail because we're just going to blur it anyway. Easy hack. I'll show you later.
So just sprinkle a few details here and there. You don't have to be very detailed, just, you know, just the gist of it. Okay, so now we're going to blur it, which I've told you earlier. It's very easy. Okay, let's let's adjust the position so that it's not blocking the character. And there we go. A piece of leaf. All right, now we're going to speed up this part because it's leaf time. You might be wondering, um, why more leaves? Why more draw? Why draw more leaves? Well, here's the secret. We're going to use them to strategically guide your viewer's eyes right back to our main focus. You know, it's a bit like a trail of visual breadcrumb. So let's sprinkle some leaves here and there. Um, as we tinker with these leaves by adjusting their placements and colors, we're not only adding depth and variety to the drawing, but also enhancing the entire illustration. All right, there we have it. Just by adding a few leaves here and there, you can guide your eyes back to the focal point. Very easy. And that's the power of subtle changes. It might be a simple shift, but the result can significantly uplift and enhance the entire drawing. Um, I mean, you can play around with the colors and experiment with different shades um, because all in all, it adds more depth and dimension to the drawing. So essentially, I'm using the leaves sort of like a redirection tool. Now we have achieved what we aim what we have aimed for. Um, the gaze is directed to the focal point. Okay, but how does it work? So the first element that captures the attention is this curve here. Yeah, so it leads us straight to the leaves, and then it follows the tails and eventually to the center point. And now you see the focus, don't you? The clarity is there. However, I have another trick up my sleeve, and this is a technique known as vignetting. So let me just show you how it works. I mean, if you're familiar with photography, you might heard of Vignet. It's an effect, so you might heard of it. Okay, if you're new to the term, don't worry, I'll break it down for you. Um, so basically, Vignet, Vigneting is a neat, it's a pretty neat artistic, artistic technique, and it, it involves darkening the edges of your drawing to subtly draw attention to the center yeah, so the edges are darkened. So it's like a gentle spotlight on your focal point, leading your viewer's eyes exactly where you want them to be. Now, um, a lot of people don't know this, but the beauty of vignetting lies in the subtlety. You don't want it to be too dramatic or overpowering. So you can just take a look at how I adjust the opacity of the layer so that it's more like a soft whisper that's guiding the viewer's gaze instead of, you know, being loud and obvious. So with a 
careful gradient of shades towards the edges of your art piece, um, you can create a beautiful soft frame that enhances your focal point. So you see it can add, it adds more depth and mood. It changes the mood of your drawing. Okay, can you see the difference? By shading the surrounding areas, the leafy centerpiece becomes even more pronounced. So it sort of like invites the viewer to explore the, intric the intricate details. Um, it's these small but powerful adjustments that can really level up your artwork. Well, at this point in our artistic journey, it's all about fine tuning and adding details to bring our artwork closer to completion. You could potentially work on an art piece indefinitely um, because there's always something new to adjust or enhance. Um, I mean, I made the decision to blur those handles a bit. So you might be wondering, why on earth would I do that? Well, that's because they were stealing the spotlight. So by blurring them, we're gently nudging them into the background and away from the focus point, hence the blur. All right, let's take a moment to compare the before and after. The original was pretty good. It was already good. There's no doubt about this. Um, so the changes I made are just my personal take minor tweaks here and there. So Kohais, what do you think? Did you find this art review helpful? What stood out to you? Was the length of the video just right? Or would you prefer something that is a little shorter next time, like the previous art reviews? Um, I want to hear your thoughts so that I can make my videos better and more helpful for all of you Kohais. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching.